Hey man, Dave here, and I'm back in my hometown of Cranston, Rhode Island. I've been on the road for four years in countless different countries, all while making money online to sustain the lifestyle. I know you guys are probably thinking, what the hell is this guy doing? So in this video, I'm gonna shed some light on what the digital nomad lifestyle is really like. Sound good? Let's do it. First off, and I know this seems obvious, is that it's more of an adventure than I ever could have imagined at the beginning. Now, I never really know where I'm gonna be in the world more than a few months in advance. Right now, I know I'm gonna be in Berlin, Japan, and probably Australia over the next few months, but after that, it's a mystery, and for me, I really like that. Sometimes it gets a little crazy and even tiring, but for at least a few months of the year, it's really fun. And I love having all the possibilities open as well. You know, if I really like one place, I can stay there for a longer amount of time. Second, you need a break. Like I said, the adventure is awesome, but sometimes you need to take a break. You need to reset. So every four to six months, I come home to hang with the family and meet up with some old friends. Like right now, I'm over here at my parents' house in Cranston, Rhode Island, sleeping in my old room, driving my old 97 Avalon, and making my mom cook me some healthy food. Family is important no matter how many crazy adventures you go on in the world. Next up, you need to hustle. Now, I know you all see the fun side of the digital nomad lifestyle, the adventures, the travel, and all that stuff, but you don't see all the hustle that goes on behind the scenes that makes it all possible. Us digital nomads, we work just as much, or in some cases, even more than people in regular jobs. A lot of times we're trying to grow something special, like, I don't know, a YouTube channel, or lay the seeds for a future of financial freedom. And a lot of work and stress come with those things. I mean, I'm over here grinding out two videos a week for you guys, and it is not easy. I promise you that. It takes a lot of planning, a lot of effort, a lot of editing. Oh, I know about the editing part, bro. But you know what? I really do enjoy it. It's fun, it's creative, and I love creating good content for you guys. And by the way, if you like this content and wanna help support me, then make sure to subscribe to my channel and click the notification bell, because I put up new videos every Tuesday and every Friday to help you talk to girls and crush it at life. Fourth, the friends make it all worth it. Now, if I was out here alone in this journey, it wouldn't be nearly as fun. I probably wouldn't be traveling as much or doing any of this stuff. You know, the friends I've met along the way make it a million times better. These are people I travel the world with. People who work online, love to go out, and love to say yes to all the same kind of crazy shit that I do. For example, I hang out with a huge crew of friends in Mexico City, and a bunch of us are hitting up Berlin in May, and then Japan after that. It's like, same crew, just different places. So I can have all these crazy adventures with familiar faces, and it makes the experience that much better, and I know I always have people there to support me and help me out if some shit goes wrong. Fifth, it's confusing. Now that I say I'm a YouTuber, people kinda get it, but before when I used to tell people I worked online, they didn't know what the hell I was talking about. And they would make a lot of assumptions like, I'm probably a trust fund kid, or I'm probably just broke and spending my money in a dumb way, and that kind of stuff. That's just something you have to get used to. People are gonna make their assumptions, so you just have to drop your ego and be okay that some people are not gonna understand. But it doesn't matter if anyone else gets it or not. As long as you're happy with what you're doing, then screw what everybody else thinks. Sixth, it's cheaper than you think. I started my digital nomad journey around four years ago when I moved to Vietnam. At the time, I was only making around $2,000 a month, but that was more than enough to have a great lifestyle there. Now, of course, I make more than I used to, but I don't spend that much more than I used to. But I still try to keep my expenses down to two or three K every month, no matter where I am in the world. So you don't have to be balling your face off to make this work, although, Hopefully, eventually, you will be balling your face off. And finally, you're gonna be okay with saying goodbye. Now, most people are not digital nomads. So when you meet cool people, awesome locals, and even other digital nomad friends, you're gonna be okay with leaving because you're not gonna be in that location forever. So you're gonna be okay with saying goodbye, at least for now, and at least until you decide to settle in one spot for a longer amount of time. But those connections you make, even if they're short-lived, allow the adventure to be all the more fun and memorable and really worthwhile. And a lot of times, knowing that they're short-lived allows you to be more present within them, which 
makes them more fulfilling in some cases. So yeah, those are the main things y'all should know about the lifestyle. Listen man, for me, this whole digital nomad thing has been the best decision I've ever made and it's not even close. The freedom, the fun, the adventure, it just makes life exciting. If you wanna know how to get started with it, then check out this video right here. It's all about how to quit your job and take control of your life. Anyway guys, I gotta go get ready for my dad's birthday party. It's his 60th birthday and he's having a huge bash for it. So that's why I came home. So I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss it and I'll talk to you soon. Peace.